Good evening, Bridgeport. Thanks for coming out. This is our April 23rd meeting. It is 744, and we are called to order. If we could please rise and rate, pledge the flag. Thank you. Angela, roll call, please. Laura Houck. Here. Kyle Shank. Amy High. Here. Megan Nolan. Here. Diane Gundrum. Here. Tony Heil. Here. Saba Al Zayed. Here. And just want to know for the record that uh, Mr. Shank mentioned that he would not be here today. Um, so he just he did let us know ahead of time. Madam President, I, for the record, we were in executive session from 7.30 to approximately 7.42 with regard to personnel and real estate acquisition. From 7 p.m. to 7.42. Thank you, sir. 30 more years, you're going to get that right. <laughs> All right, good evening, everybody. Uh, first up on the agenda for council consideration, approval of the March 26th, 2024 meeting minutes. Can I make the motion? Second. Motion for Mr. Hale, second for Ms. Nolan. Do we have any questions or comments from the public or council? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries, thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, moving on for council consideration. A request from Upper Marion Boat Club regarding the use of Rotunda Park in conjunction with the annual King's Head Regatta. And the date of that event uh, is September 29th, 2024. Uh, members of council in your packets, you will find uh, an email from a Mr. Robert Russell. Um, who is, I see in attendance this evening, it's nice to see you, sir, um, requesting, uh, requesting permission, as they do annually, to utilize the, uh, the property uh, that uh, the borough owns adjacent to the fish ladder, known as Rotunda Park, for, uh, for parking and staging of their uh, vehicles and trailers and boats in the corner, you know, it, Leading up to for for the uh, for the uh, event on uh, September 29th, the ricotta. Um, I had asked uh, Mr. Russell uh, and or any other uh, colleagues uh, represent the wish to represent the uh, the event to uh, come tonight. If any uh, members of council had any questions, um, as is customarily what we what we customarily agree to is that. Um, the uh, the boat club provides a uh, if council is so inclined to approve this um, provides a certificate of insurance uh, indemnifying the borough against any uh, accidents that may take place um, that day uh, and that if there is any damage caused to the uh, to the property that it is restored uh, in a uh, in a timely fashion. Um, always seems to be rainy right around that time period and, and, and there's sometimes some rutting occurs. Uh, but they have definitely uh, patched that, seeded it and put straw over it in the past and I'm sure that uh, uh, they will tell you that they're more than willing to do so again this year if granted the opportunity. Mr. Russell and uh, your, your, your colleague, you're more than welcome to come forward and, and, and speak. Putting together I did not mean to steal your thunder, space Bob. I'm sorry. And space so I could see it with my old eyes. And, but um, the one thing that I would like to, um, to add is that the boat club doesn't own any property in this area. And um, we depend on the cooperation and support of our neighbors along the river to put a regatta of this size on. And uh, we want to thank very much the borough of Bridgeport uh, for all of its support uh, over the years. Um, uh, it, and we, uh, we definitely do not want to leave an unsightly mess on your property as a result of our regatta. 
um, would be open to any kind of a discussion of more suitable restoration of the or methods uh, in case they're necessary. If it doesn't rain, it's probably not going to be necessary, but um, um, anyhow, I'm very glad, very happy not to read all of this, but uh, <laughs> if you have any questions. I, I would only note that, you know, it's uh, Mr. Russell, it's always nice to see you. You're always, you always, uh, you always acquit yourself nicely when you come. Um, you're a great representative for the boat club. Uh, you know, last year we did, it, it did in fact, uh, there, there was a downpour um, the day of and maybe the day before. And there was some pretty bad rutting and the, the, the representatives came out and were extremely fast to, to fix the ruts and, and seed and straw. Uh, and I'm sure you'll do the same thing again in the event that occurs. I would only note that um, your event is September 29th, and we have the annual 5K October 1st, essentially I the think same. It's October the 5th. Uh, pardon me, October 5th. A few few days a uh, few days thereafter. Um, so in the event there is any uh, rutting, we we would need to get it you know rectified we pretty pretty quickly beforehand. Quickly. Yeah. Yes, I figure we've got five days from the. Um, September 30th through October 4th. Uh, pardon me, Jason pardon me. It was, it was October 1st last year. It's October 5th this year. You're okay. correct, Mr. Russell. That's okay. Well, Mr. Russell, you always um, bring a lot to the Bridgeport. Hi. <laughs> it's okay. Um, Bad hearing. When you get to my age, you're lucky if you can see across the room. I, no, I'm, I understand. Um, and I, I, since he's not here, I'm sure we all know that the rain was the responsibility of uh, Councilman Kyle Shank uh, last year. So that was all his fault and responsibility. You, you work on him uh, and to have something done about... Uh, uh, no, he's I'm not sorry. here. <laughs> the guy who's not here. Um, but but you, all, you, you bring a lot of credibility to, the, to Bridgeport, thank, and thank we're happy much. to have you because it, um, it encourages other good partners to want to be here, too. And it's a good for our credibility and stature. So thank you for being here. And because we would have approved this even with you, out, not to tell you not to come, but the fact that you come here shows a seriousness that you give it and the seriousness you give us. One thing I would like to say that uh, my name is Robert. Russell, Bob Russell, and I don't have any connection with anybody who works for uh, Upper Marion Township. And, and, and nor had to be there. Nor does anybody. Nor does anybody believe that at, at, at this <laughs> juncture, Mr. Russell. That was a uh, gosh. How many years ago was that? Yeah, Several. It was, that was before the yeah. pandemic. It was. That was. That was a while ago. ago. No. 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 No relation to anybody in Upper Marion Park and Recreation. Understood. Okay. That's fine. Thank you. Uh, with, with that in mind, I will make a motion to approve the request from the Upper Marion Boat Club. Okay. I will second that and say that I am excited and hoping for the same um, no rain for that day. <laughs> um, and it is always a pleasure to share a parking lot with you. You guys are all very respectful and you have a lot of great people thank, thank that show up. Thank you. Uh, we do give lessons if anybody's interested. I mean, I'm 81 years old and uh, it's kept me alive and well for, for a long time. So thank you very much. That's fantastic. Thank you for not making, not making. <laughs> <laughs> thank you for coming out, Mr. Russell. We have, a, we have a motion from Mr. Heil, a second from Ms. Hill. Do we have any questions or comments from the public or council? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. Thank you. Thanks for coming out. Uh, again, thank you, gentlemen. You're, you're more than welcome to uh, to stick around and, and uh, a part, or, uh, enjoy the rest of this evening's proceedings, but please feel free to uh, head on out and uh, have a great evening. So thank you. Um, <clears throat> next uh, item of business. For council consideration, a request from Bridgeport Fire Department to use the uh, FEMA hazard mitigation uh, buyout properties to conduct fire training. Members of council in your packets, <clears throat> excuse me, you'll find a, an email from Fire Chief Wanzik uh, from Thursday, April 11th, uh, formally requesting uh, from the fire department use of the borough acquired bil buildings that are uh, scheduled to be uh, demolished uh, inevitably. The um, use of these buildings would be invaluable for their training 
Uh, if approved, the BFD would schedule training during hours that would not affect the neighbors. Uh, I believe they are in particular uh, interested in using the two larger uh, properties that are up at the corner of 2nd and Green, uh, 134 and the one across the street, 135. Uh, I, I, yeah, th th those, were the, those were the properties that I discussed with, uh, with Chief Wanzik. Do we have a motion? I'll make the motion. Second. We have a motion from Ms. Gundrum, a second from Mr. Heil. Do we have any questions or comments from council or the public? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries, thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, moving on, for council consideration, resolution 2024-22. And this resolution is uh, the uh, authorization of the submission of a community development block grant application. A, the project in question, uh, speaking of the FEMA buyout program, uh, would be for a project that we are calling the Front Street Pocket Park Project. Uh, I will fo move along to this next slide to give a brief snapshot of the estimated cost, and then I will pull up the uh, the uh, preliminary uh, design plans. So at this time, um, and included within the block grant application, the labor and site work for this project would be estimated at $247,250. The acquisition of playground equipment would be estimated at 148000 and then there's a contingency in there and that, that includes what's referred to as soft costs, i.e. Uh, legal engineering uh, and other, maybe, uh, other minor uh, cost overruns uh, of $98,000 and change for a total cost estimate at this juncture of $494,063. We would be seeking $200,000 in block grant funding to offset that uh, whatever ultimately the cost would uh, would come to on this project. Now, moving over to the design. You can't see it. That is, so you can't. <laughs> thanks, for sh thanks for sharing. Uh, uh, just to you no, I, I appreciate you letting me know. <laughs> there we go. That's it. <laughs> So the Front Street Pocket Park project would uh, prospectively be placed on uh, four of the several parcels that uh, the borough is, has either already or is in the process of acquiring uh, at the corner of Front and Depot Streets. The, pro the parcels that uh, comprise uh, one, three, five, seven, and nine West Front Street. And these are the parcels. Uh, this is the, the plot of land. It's about 10,500 10 square feet in total. Uh, it is directly across the street, uh, for anybody that isn't exactly familiar, directly across the street from Mattis Brothers Auto Body. And at this point, uh, we are this, 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 again, this is, I, I would reiterate, we are, uh, we still have yet to acquire all of the properties here. We still have one of those uh, properties that, that we still have to purchase. And then additionally, we still have to demolish all of these properties. And then we will not be able to proceed with this project until the FEMA hazard mitigation grant has been officially closed out by the federal government. And that, I am being told uh, will not occur until at least a year from a year from now, uh, and that's on the um, that that's that's on the uh, the 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 liberal or, or, or generous end. There's cer certainly could be longer than that. Um, it's it's a simple you know it's only ten and a half thousand square feet, uh, so it's a rather simple design, but. You know, the, uh, the overall goal of the hazard mitigation grant is to 
remove properties from the flood zone and reduce the overall chance for uh, future uh, future property damage, future uh, safety hazards, loss of life, future liability uh, when faced with uh, flooding hazards and uh, you know natural disasters that are that, that are potentially could happen in the floodplain. Um, obviously, we all remember what took place uh, during Ida, and you know a lot of a lot of families were affected by that. The the entire community was affected by that. Uh, very, uh, very grievously, and um, you know, I, I think that if there's any positivity or sunshine, ray of uh, nice ray of light that that comes from what was a horrible and traumatic experience uh, for the, everybody uh, that that was involved, is that we could potentially provide a really nice amenity to this section of town that. You know, geographically speaking, while Bridgeport is a very small town and is very walkable, it's still geographically the farthest walk from this neighborhood all the way up to Memorial Park. So bringing a small uh, park and playground to this neighborhood uh, could potentially be a really, uh, really nice touch, um, a nice, uh, you know, providing these residents, this, this block, uh, this this group of residents in this neighborhood, this block group, with a, a public amenity that they can all uh, enjoy and be really proud of. Um, here is a provisional sampling of what kind of uh, jungle gym and playground equipment we could install. Um, again, this is in the 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 design and the selection of equipment here um, is not set in stone. As I said, we have a lot of time between now and when we could even potentially break ground on a project of this nature. Uh, we have a lot of uh, we have a lot of time to further sharpen our pencils and uh, redesign and revise the current design, uh, select different playground equipment if we so chose. However. Um, I, I thought it might be prudent to strike while the iron is hot uh, and begin looking at potential funding mechanisms to, uh, to secure some funds now for a project that is probably, you know, let's say you know, a year and a half, two years away. Um, so with that, uh, I am more than happy to uh, field any questions. And then ultimately, uh, you know, turn it back over to uh, to council to to consider the resolution. I think uh, thank you, Keith, for that. This is fantastic. I think this is a first of many steps um, in kind of achieving our goals to make Bridgeport somewhere that's really fun to live, full of events, full of public spaces, um, and just uh, somewhere that we you know can continue to be proud to be from and uh, enjoy experiencing together. Um, so th it's a huge effort to kind of put this together. So I appreciate our staff and kind of. Um, this effort and feat, but this is, um, you know, one of many, hopefully, initiatives that we can continue to to uh, to push. So I encourage again everyone to come to council to share your thoughts, to share your ideas, um, and to you know help us shape Bridgeport with you together. Um, but I'm really excited for this, um, and I think as as you mentioned with the flood, um, kind of being something that was really negative. Hopefully, this can be one very small um, positive that comes of it. Uh, but yeah, if anyone has any questions or comments from council or the public about. The project. Yep. I have a question. So we have not picked um, equipment for this yet. That's still up in the air. That that is correct. Okay. So the numbers that we put out were just a general estimate amongst what's available. So like say that again, well, please? the number that you put up for the equipment. That's just an estimate based upon what's available or like what you're what you envision to be there. Uh, it's it's an estimate that's based on the amount of space that we have at our disposal uh, and other parks that uh, our engineers have worked on in the past, and generally what the the current I guess current design is for for playgrounds and and what you're what you're seeing in small pocket parks of this nature these days so um, they're again they're they're more they're placeholder placeholder pieces of play around equipment to give us as firm a cost estimate as possible so that we can proceed with seeking out funding because without a firm design in hand um, and just having you know an, a, a thought bubble or an idea 
the, you know, the generally you don't get grant funding for that. You need to put something on paper. So um, we're not married to this. We're not married to the design, and we're not married to the specific pieces of equipment at this point. So who's yeah, going to do I that marrying, though? I um, could briefly add to that since I kind of did this, my, me and my staff. Uh, this was just equipment that we selected off of the CoStar site, which is available to, to all municipalities in the state. And as Keith said, it's very similar to some other parks that we've, we've worked on, and we just picked uh, basically placeholder equipment to fit on that site so we could get the grant in. And it, there was really no more input other than me and my staff and running it by Keith to say, what do you think? So we, for on the design side, when when the rubber hits the road here, we'd certainly be looking for uh, plenty of input. Okay, great. I was going to say it would be great if some of the parents um, in the area, maybe if we had like some kind of like uh, examples, if you people could vote on it, maybe would get an idea of what they kind of want out there. Yeah, that, that's a great idea, and also. Um Obviously, what's there is not limited to that. This is how much we would be spending, but as our solicitor would probably agree, that sometimes there's other organizations that chip in and provide additional equipment, swings, chairs. There's some great organizations that have helped Bridgeport in the past. That's my understanding. I heard as much. Yes. Um, there's, there's a number of uh, grant programs in addition to, to what we're looking at right now that could be piggybacked on top of this also. But most of them want to see at least something that's this far in development before they'll consider it. Yeah. And I also, I, I knocked on some of those doors for a variety of reasons. The community cupboard helps a lot of those families. And I, when I've talked to the residents, um, one, thankfully, they don't have, the residents I've talked to have not complained about the development and the process there. They've mostly been saying that they've been polite and everything. But they've also had this a, a feeling that, oh, that's going to be gated off or anything that's done there is going to be for them. I said, no, we're, we're building a park. This is the whole, the goal here is not for that to be separate, but for everyone to be one community. And this is what that goes to. And I, I think that um, I, I really appreciate Keith. We've talked about this in finance. We've talked about this here for a number of months as well. Um, I think this is uh, going to be one of the better things we do in the next few years. It might be small to our overall projects, but um, we can't negate or neglect any part of Bridgeport. It's all one community. So I, I think this is great. I think that what this is here is not going to be limited to what we see today. It's going to be even better um, sometime down the road. So uh, let's, we need to proceed. Um, I will make a motion to um, approve the resolution for the application as well. I will second that. I have a motion for Mr. Hiles, second for Ms. Howe. Do we have any more questions or comments from public or council? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Is there any opposed? The motion carries. Thank you. All right. Thank you all. <laughs> Moving on, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, for council consideration, resolution 2024-23, executing a license agreement between the borough of Bridgeport and growing Bridgeport together for the use of borough property for the Bridgeport River Market. Uh, members of council, there is a, uh, an annual license agreement uh, that is agreed upon by the, the borough and growing Bridgeport together in order to utilize, um, some, in some years it's been the, uh, the borough parking lot, in other years it has uh, historically been the Rotunda Riverfront Park. Uh, for so that uh, Growing Bridgeport Together can operate the what was previously known as Twilight on the River, now known as Bridgeport River Market, um, and the this resolution is the annual memorialization or authorization to execute the license agreement that establishes and memorializes the agreement between the two agencies. Do you have a motion? Before we get into the voting, I am, will submit a recusal, recruit, recusal for this <laughs> due to my position on the board with Growing Bridgeport Together. Thank you, Ms. Gunner. I'll make the motion. I'll second. Motion from Ms. Hill, second from Ms. Nolan. Do we have any questions or comments from the public or council? I know I'll just mention that I really appreciate you doing this for the second year that I've been a part of it and um, very excited for summertime spending it with you guys. Um, I am. Um, I was saying. Thank you, Mr. John. I want to say make, uh, another comment too. Thank you for John and, and Diane for all the work that they've done um, putting this together. I think that this is another great thing for Bridgeport, yes. um, and I'm really looking forward to year two. 
All righty. We have no no further comments. Do we, um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Are there any opposed? The motion carries. Thank you. All right. Uh, moving on. <clears throat> For council consideration, resolution 2023-24. Adopting a mission statement and core values for the borough of Bridgeport. And um, I just wanted to state that over the last several months, <clears throat> uh, President Al Zayed, along with uh, the members of council, um, with some input from, uh, from myself, um, have been working on developing uh, a mission statement and core values for the uh, borough of Bridgeport as an organization. And, you know, some might ask, you know, what, what are mission statements and core values and why adopt them? Um, simply put, a mission statement defines what an organization does on a daily basis and core values are the characteristics and ideals of your organization and how you operate. Uh, creating a mission statement and core values makes a statement as to how an organization and its personnel will interact with the consumer. Uh, the values and mission statement of any organization are the foundation upon which all decisions are made. Did you want to say something? Um, okay. Uh, and here, uh, for uh, for consideration this evening. I will, uh, I'll move forward with uh, reading out the mission statement and the core values. Uh, the, the mission statement that is being considered this evening would be uh, to foster a vibrant and inclusive community where residents feel connected, supported, and empowered to thrive while embracing sustainable growth, celebrating our heritage, and striving for a high quality of life for all. And the core values that would be associated with Bridgeport are community engagement, transparency and accountability, stewardship and sustainability, innovation and adaptation, and finally, safety and security. And I, I think that um, I know that, that President Al Zayed has uh, spearheaded this, uh, this effort, and I think that the, the mission statement and the core values do a really good job of encapsulating, um, you know, in, in a nutshell, what a engaged and caring community should be all about. So um, I, I think you did a great job and, and, and kudos and thank you for your, uh, your help and your work on this. Yeah, I appreciate it, Keith. Thanks for the idea and for bringing it to us. Um, I think it's really important as a team um, to kind of uh, have a guiding light for us to, in moving forward. We make a lot of decisions every day um, for a lot of people and we affect a lot of people's lives. So I think it's very important to communicate where our intentions are, um, what we're using as our guidance. Um, I think this is, you know, the best, the most fantastic, the, the community that I love the most, and I'd like to preserve this great community in any way that I can do that, um, whether or not I'm in this seat. Um, and I feel that doing you know, things like this with a mission statement and uh, core values <clears throat> allows for longe longevity um, and that goal. Um, again, preserves this community, it honors its history, um, and gives you a transparent government that works for you. Um, and I think that you know anyone that lives here can kind of hold us accountable to these things, and I think we could all feel comfortable with um, speaking to them, working within them, um, and being corrected if, if not. So um, I think you know this is the, what we're using as our guidance. Um, I'd encourage everybody to read it. Um, let us know what you think, but ultimately um, it's how we're gonna be moving forward in at least the next four years, and hopefully if it continues, uh, adaptive beyond that. Um, so yeah, um, any, if there's any questions or comments um, before we adopt it, I'm happy to hear them from you. I have a comment. Yeah. I just wanted to say um, publicly how amazing this mission statement ended up. And I know that we all had our little inputs to it, but President, you really outdid yourself. I really think that you captured everything that we were trying to put out there. Yeah, I, I really appreciate the behind the scenes work that you did, uh, Council President. And I think that this kind of goes to show that um, you know today's primary day and people are voting and it's why it's when you vote, it's not just about voting for a Democrat or Republican, though obviously we have our biases there, um, but it's about the kind of people and what they bring, because it's our votes are our votes, we can do that, it's the ideas we bring to the table, and I don't. I think if you weren't here, we wouldn't have had this idea, so I appreciate you doing that and your leadership on this, so I think this is wonderful and uh, it's a good guide, guiding point for the future. 
Thank you for the support. Thank you. All righty. Do we have a motion to approve? I'll make a motion to approve the mission statement. I'll second. We have a motion from Mr. Hyle, a second from Ms. Nolan. Do we have any questions or comments from the public or council? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Are there any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. All right, thank you all. Uh, moving forward, for council consideration, uh, resolution 2024-25, authorizing the buyout of 9 West Front Street through the FEMA HMGP program. Uh, members of council, the this property is the is the fifth of a, uh, a five uh, contiguous group of five parcels uh, located at the corner of Front and Depot, uh, which the aforementioned Front Street Pocket Park would, uh, would ultimately be located on uh, at least a portion of 9 West Front Street. Uh, one through seven West Front are a series of attached row homes that have already been acquired through the buyout program. And Nine West Front is a single family home that is located uh, detached from this group of row homes, but located right, uh, right next door. And the approved sales price, which was generated through uh, the appraisal process and then ultimately um, reviewed and revised and uh, stamped for approval by both FEMA and Pima uh, would be two hundred and fifty eight thousand nine hundred and thirty eight dollars uh, would uh, would be the uh, would be the approved purchase price uh, through this resolution uh, uh, for acquiring nine West Front Street and again that would be done with grant monies provided to us by the federal government in the FEMA hazard mitigation grant program. I'll make the motion for a buyout. I'll second. I have a motion for Mr. Hyle, second for Ms. Gundrum. Do we have any comments or questions from council or the public? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries, thank you. And for council consideration, authorization of bills and salaries for the month of April, 2024. Make the motion to pay the people. Second. Motion from Ms. Hall, second from Ms. Gundrum. Do we have any comments or, or questions from the public or council? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries, thank you. All right, very good. Moving forward to unfinished business. Are there any items of unfinished business to discuss this evening? All right, seeing none, committee reports. Are there any committee reports to share? I will say from finance committee, we did uh, discuss the CDBG application. We were, that was the big thing at the last uh, finance meeting uh, last Monday. And also there was supposed to be a small business meeting this past Monday, but that got postponed to May. So everyone knows that they might be nominating their next citizenship award. I know Dr. Ray has someone in mind or the whole group has someone in mind, but I don't want to jump ahead of him. Thank you, Vice President Heil. Uh, moving on to the mayor's report, uh, Mayor Jack Sear. Thank you. Um, since our last council meeting, um, I met with the board of Gray Bridgeport together. I don't know if like, Diane, I don't know if you wanna say anything about our upcoming plans, but I can talk about it, okay. Um, so we are excited to announce that we received a grant to provide some mental health programming to the community. And we're excited to announce that at the June 9th Bridgeport River Market from 11 a.m. to 12 p.m., um, they'll be hosting a mindfulness meditation class, which is free for all ages. It's going to be really fun. Um, I know the guy, seen his work. It's very good. Um, all you need to do is just show up and bring a yoga mat if you'd like to have a place to sit since it's going to be outside. Um, we're also working on getting a yoga instructor for the Mother's Day Bridgeport River Market event on May 12th. So if you know of a local instructor, please have them reach out to either me or Diane or John. Um, Founders Day is only a few weeks ago, but the Founders Day committee is already at it, trying to make next year's event even better than this year. 
So if you're interested in learning more about joining the committee, please reach out to me. And since our next meeting isn't until mid-May, please note that May 4th is International Firefighters Day. So please take this opportunity to support our fire company by signing up to volunteer at whatever level you're comfortable with, donating to support their efforts, or just thanking one of our volunteer firefighters when you see them. They'll appreciate it. And I just want to wish a happy election day to everybody who voted in today's election, which should be everybody who's eligible, and a happy Passover to those who celebrate. That is all I have. Thank you. Mayor, I just wanted to follow up on something for, that you did last year, because um, I don't know if I talked to you about this today, but I had a car problem. This story gets too quickly. Uh, and I had to go, I was, it was an emergency. It was very disappointing because my car wouldn't start. Thankfully, we have Butch, who's only a block away. And I went there, and as I was there, the police had pulled over somebody, and it was for uh, wrong uh, stickers. And they said that they, they've been getting, they've gotten a lot of people because of the grant money that the program that you and the chief got together with the with representative Briggs uh, I think you've got we've gotten a lot of people who had ex, uh, expired stickers right so you got that done and when I talked to Tim today about it and they and I just can see it's still working very well so uh, it seems like it was a year ago an accomplishment then but it seems like it's actually been very effective and kudos a year later well, thank you. I know that the officers have been working really hard on it. So, thank you. All right. Thank you, Mayor Jack Sear. I'm moving on to the Chief's report. Chief Beretta. Good evening, Bridgeport. Just to bounce back off what uh, Vice President Heil was saying, uh, we just got done with an aggressive driving grant. Um, so that was like 32 hours of additional enforcement that we get that uh, reimbursed back to us. So that occurred. Uh, we're going to be working with our PSP partners on, uh, and radar details um, coming up uh, in about a week to 10 days. So that's going to be coming up shortly. Um, most importantly, it's a small town. Um, we made an arrest uh, last night at about uh, uh, 1045 last night involving um, an assault, and there was a weapon that was discharged at a residence. No one was hurt from the discharge of the weapon but we've already made an arrest. We've recovered uh, a weapon, secured a car, and we have people identified, and I suspect that we will be making uh, a few more arrests here in the next short period of time. Uh, so bad things happen in good places. Um, small victories occur uh, in this. Uh, we recovered a stolen gun, stolen from someplace else, recovered it in our investigation. And also today we we're notified that uh, another one of our our victories was that Bodhi DNA program that we've been working for the last three and a half years. Um, we just got another hit from someone that tried to steal one of our Hyundais and Kias back in December. So they'll be very surprised uh, when they get arrested s soon for what they did back in December because that DNA is the kind of thing it's a, it keeps working for you and just waiting for somebody else to um, get arrested for something else had be put in the system, then all of a sudden, then we catch them for a bunch of different things. So I know we had multiple vehicles that attempted to be stolen that one night, and I suspect that we'll be making some arrests for that. So that's a positive thing from a negative situation. That's all I have for you tonight. All right, thank you, Chief Beretta. I'm moving on to new business. Are there any items of new business to discuss this evening? All right, seeing none, we can proceed to announcements. Uh, any announcements to make? I do have an announcement for us. Uh, uh, not this upcoming Saturday, but the following is Saturday, May the 4th, is our annual spring cleanup day. Uh, we will meet outside of Borough Hall at 10 a.m. where everybody can pick up their um, bags, gloves, um, and then we will break off into groups. And as usual, lunch will be provided. We'll have pizza and wings, as always. And also this year, we will have uh, T-shirts um, that are sponsored by the Bridgeport Business Association. And... Uh, 
my husband, um, be like a little proud wife over here, but my husband did the uh, the artwork. We have a very uh, Bridgeport inspired, I mean, I'm sorry, not Bridgeport, Star Wars inspired uh, design for our May the 4th theme with cleanup day. So I hope to see everybody out there. One of my favorite events every year. We have so much fun to bring the kids out. The kids love it. So definitely encourage everybody to come, meet some new people, meet some new friends, um, get some good food. And it's really well organized. Everything's provided for you. So hope to meet some new faces and um, also older friends. Yeah, thank you. I never thought I'd get um, so jazzed about trash. But there's something about <laughs> picking up trash and being around people that it's just such a wonderful morning. And I uh, look forward to seeing people there. I love talking trash with you, Meg. <laughs> Well, I think another part of it too is um, if it's if it's overwhelming to kind of tackle all of Bridgeport, think of it as in your own neighborhood. Like sometimes when we didn't have the time to um, go kind of from top to bottom in terms of the timing, we would just focus on our street and make sure that our street was clean and then bring the trash down. So, um, you know, it could be as big or small as you'd like or as much time commitment or as little um, for sure. So thanks for organizing, Meg. It's always fantastic. Um, I have one additional quick um, announcement. So. Um, kind of in the breath of building things for Bridgeport and specifically in events and public spaces and things like that, um, you know, we, we've been trying to think about things that make Bridgeport special, and there's so many of them. Um, but I think a quick start for us is Halloween. Halloween's something that stands out to everyone. We have a really unique Halloween here in Bridgeport. I think everybody has um, really appreciates it, loves it, experiences it, young and old and um, everyone in between. Uh, so we wanted to amplify that. We wanted to kind of package it and make it something that is really a Bridgeport thing, uh, thing that we'd like to push forward. Um, we, will be we will be transforming Bridgeport into Booport for a month, um, so really exciting. And uh, as a part of that, I am announcing um, the, uh, the Halloween committee that will be meeting the first Tuesday of every month at 6.30. Um, feel free to reach out to me. We'll be posting about it so you can get some more information. Um, it's, you know, as little amount of work or as, you know, as much amount of work in the same breath of, um, you know, um, cleanup day. It's a, also an opportunity to meet some people in Bridgeport and do something fun um, for the community. So we'll have some more information about it, but just wanted to announce that that will be happening soon. We'll be meeting next month, and we'll be starting um, to kind of plan some really fun events around um, Bridgeport. And that's all I have. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Council Member Nolan and President al -Zayed. Uh, one other announcement I think that we should note here, I think it deserves being announced, is that one of our council members was recently um, got a lot of attention this weekend running in a silver medal award uh, as a Philly favorite uh, with Frosty Falls. And I think we all uh, want to congratulate and uh, applaud Laura and Frosty Falls for that recognition as one of the best places in the region. So congratulations, Laura. Thank you, but really all my credit goes to my customers. They're the ones that put me there. I just gave them, I just gave them good ice cream, and um, I'm really appreciative of everyone that you know supported me through everything that we've been through. So thank you, Tony, for that. All right, thank you, uh, thank you, Vice President Heil. Uh, moving on to public comment, are there any? And, congr and congratulations to uh, Council Member Houck. Pardon me. Um, <laughs> Thanks, Keith. You're very welcome. <laughs> I, I know. I, 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 no, no ice cream. No ice cream for a month for me. I get it. Um, are there any? Uh, moving on to public comment. Are there any public comments or any members of the public that wish to speak this evening? Uh, seeing none, council could entertain a motion to adjourn. A motion to adjourn. Second. It is 827 and we are adjourned. Thanks for coming out.